a mainstream nigga just to set it straight. Rich boy, ET nigga, chose my weight. We gon' push them units from state to state. Like a nigga on dope, still a losing weight. It's been a long time coming, I'ma tell the truth. I'm just one less nigga with a brand new crew. I'm about to let you know this shit's real, Drew. It's just another chapter closed, like a closing on both. from, you know, at the beginning. Well, basically Westside has fun from because me, I had a car with Westside wrote in the window. Everybody started calling me Westside Ave because I threw the W. I was like one of the first original guys in Jackson, Mississippi to start throwing the W. Every time you see me, I would come by throwing the W. I also had it engraved in my car door on my car. Okay. And, you know, with I was known for a lot of different things. I was known for being the promoter, uh, the rapper, the club host. Mainly I was known for being the big club host at the big club in Jackson. Uh, the club was called the Upper Level. Okay. So, West I L, AKA Mr. Upper Level. You know, so I host the club, really was like crowd control. Every Thursday, Friday, Thursday and Saturday night. It was like, basically, I had it on my car. I put a big old sign in the back of my window that said West Side. Okay. So everybody put that together. Because you're from the West Side. Because I'm from the West Side of Jackson. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, this is the street I used to be on this street term, terrorizing. All these houses used to be drug houses. It's just no went down over here. Yeah, they no tow this house down, you know that? They got an old house right here. This is it right here. I used to terrorize this whole neighborhood. This is why I used to come and sit there right here and be waiting on somebody to come through here with that wood shit. Right here. Sit right here. So they got my old, old house used to be right there too. What's that? Here? Yeah, you know yeah, what's I that? Here? I, I raised it. What's that? Here? <laughs> uh, you know, say, me and me and Andre, Andre is Seth's first cousin, and me and him was like best friends. Uh -huh. and so Seth came over Andre's house when he was like ten. So you know, I was one of the guys in the neighborhood. Seth just the man. Every time I see him, he always looking up at me, smiles. <laughs> he just be looking. He was a little short, fat dude then. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he used to always look up at me and smile all the time. Good and, and, and bad influence. Coming up, you the first person to taught me how to shoot dice. We used to go in the back room. In the front room, my mom was going to the back, close the door. We quarters and dimes, we shoot it. <laughs> like, right. See, like, if we roll this point, you have to roll it again for you at seven. If it's seven, you lose it. But we knew it. You know? They were like, you know, it always seemed like, because he was taller, he might have been a bad He ain't got no business with y'all, but he really not a thing. He ain't too far. Much older. <laughs> Man, he was just right. taller all the time. <laughs> yeah. Right. And he ain't never changed his humor. That's funny. That's air. Air being air. Whenever I see him from then to now, that's what it is. What I said, air gonna be air. He, he, the older he done got, the more dramatic he got. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. 
He been the chief of police with me. <laughs> Look at all these old school cars you got. Round it right there. Here you go, right here. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> Man, we just all started back at Brinkley Junior High School up on Ridge, uh, Ridgeway, you know, off Ridgeway. And, uh, you know, we used to run together, you know, when, uh, when the games first hit uh, Mississippi. I think the brothers are struggling. Uh, I think it hit Mississippi in like 19, I think it was like 1980, 81, 82, huh? When we became up under uh, the 6.0 uh, for like 30 plus or more years, you know? And uh, we done been down through some things, you know what I'm saying? We ended up been doing time together in prison. You know, we had I had went one way and strayed off. He went to prison at an early age, you know, as a youngster, you know? All because of some bull crap, but I ended up coming to prison later on, and so and uh, we hooked back up in prison, you know. We went fishing, man. They called Nam Fish. Ah, uh, Nam Fish. I tried to get the man to go up to the rubber lock where we know we'll catch a catfish. Man, the man took me over to all uh, <laughs> the South Jackson. Oh, uh, Lakeland. Uh, oh, Lakeland. Oh, Lakeland. Right? Stood out there all day. They catch nothing. Man. man. <laughs> See, we do stuff like that still now. We go fishing and stuff. You know, it's pretty much that we done got all of, you know what I'm saying? We'll get together, hang out every now and then. Come out here, he'll take me out to eat for breakfast. I eat, I call him and say, come on, man, let's go eat. I buy him lunch, I'll go with breakfast. I mean, that's pretty much how life goes now. You I was alert. I'm G D, seven four, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. you know. Uh I'm a, a gangster, I'm originally a gangster disciple. Okay. Been a part of the struggle since nineteen eighty two. Mm -hmm. And Right now, I'm known as growth and development. I'm like really like an OG, like really like laid back, okay. like more an advisor to the younger youth. Mm -hmm. I'm not like affiliated with just being foolish. A lot of people don't understand what growth and development means or okay. what it stands for. Okay. Are you guys like halftime junkies or what? No, we junkies through the whole game. Not no halftime. No game junkies. Everybody if, if ain't nobody here, it'd be me. It'd be so mad. It'd be busy. <laughs> My man, where everybody? I don't know. They with you. <laughs> <laughs> The shooting happened April 23rd, 2005, at approximately 9.20. i never forget that day. Okay. And I was on my way to work at the upper level. I normally go around 9.30, 10 o'clock. And so I stopped by the store. And as I was going in the store, as I came out the store, I saw some guys from the hood and it was a guy said something to me, some words was passed, and I went on about my way to my car. As I was going to my car, dude ran up behind me, with had a had a, a 45 in his hand, and so as he had the 45 in his hand, I don't want to go into too much of the details about that, but as he had the 45 in his hand. I began to get behind a van and he was shooting at me and I was he was missing. And so he shot a few times and he missed. And it was this older guy 
in this van and I saw him in there and he was like just caught in the middle of the crossfire and he wanted to get out of the way so I was trying to figure out a way that I could get away and I thought that I really could like duck, dodge, this and that. So as I tried to make a break for it, I got hit in my left leg, right leg, in the back, hit through the back. And it came through the front, and I can't pull my pants up. It's too mm -hmm. tight. Yeah. But anyway, it hit me right here. Mm -hmm. This leg went completely numb. Mm -hmm. And so, as it went numb, I automatically fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. And so, the guy was walking up to me. He was steady shoot, boom, 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 boom. But he was missing a lot. But he hit me in the back, in the mm -hmm. lower back, mm -hmm. and then in the, in the leg again. And so. As I laid there, he got there to my head and grabbed me. I had a long dress, then he grabbed yeah. me by my head. Mm -hmm. And he grabbed the gun and put it to my head. He said, I'm going to kill you. But he clicked the gun. As he clicked the gun, there wasn't no more bullets in it. He had to shot all his bullets out. Mm -hmm. It wasn't nothing but the grace of God. So, but um, after that, I was laying on the ground. Everything was going in slow motion as I laid there. And then, because I was going through all the... It's going through the whole little shabam. If you ever notice, if you off into some kind of trouble and it's like an accident or something, your brain speeds up. Mm. So my brain speeds up, everything is in slow motion. So when, once the shooting stopped, everything came to a complete stop and started back moving. Mm. He ran off and got in his car and left. People crowded around. It was like they was trying to see what was wrong. And so I was like, man, somebody get me to the hospital. And so it was this guy named Boo. And uh, I really didn't know him. Everybody knew me from the club. And so he took me to the hospital. And on the way to the hospital, I called my brother. He's deceased now. And I had called him. And so as he was on the way to the hospital, and I was calling my brother. And I called him. I said, Nuke, I said, uh, you need to get to the hospital. I'm on the way to the hospital. I've been shot. And I said, uh, and it's kind of like, uh, it's real bad. And so, uh, he was like, okay, I said, we'll go tell mama. And I said, I'm on my way to the hospital. As I was going to the hospital, my stomach was hurting real bad. So I told dude, I said, can I hold your hand? He let me hold his hand. And I laid my head on his shoulder. Mm. And um, I just told him, I said, man, just let me lay here for a minute. So he finally, as he got me to the emergency room, they came out with where he ran up to them and told me, I got somebody in the car that's been shot. So they came out with the uh, wheelchair and they got me in. So when the doctor got me out of the car, and I said, I'm just in a lot of pain. I said, my stomach pain. He said, how you feel? I said, I'm in a lot of pain. And I told him, I said, uh, I said, I just need you to do one thing. You know, I want you to take the pain away. And I said that uh, I just want you to do one thing. Is that uh, is, is, is tell tell my tell my mom and my kids that I love them, and I'll take the pain away. Shot up at the stove. Shot at the stove. Didn't they tell you I got killed? Well, for, yeah, that was thing got first when they got shot at the stove. Now the first question be, damn, is he dead? I don't know. He headed to the hospital. Everybody headed to the hospital. Like, damn, what did I have to do? I don't do nothing with it. So that's sort of, that was crazy as hell because you living in a world where you know what I'm saying. I couldn't understand, like, what could I do to make somebody that shot him? Mm -hmm. and, and, and it wasn't nothing so, but you know, you didn't have time to think about that. Everybody just loaded up. Different people, I guess everybody would meet at the hospital. We up there. It was a long journey, you know. And I remember, you know. Did you think that you were going to lose him? Well, yeah, you know, at a time, you know. We didn't know if we were going to lose him or he was going to be here. Because they were talking about he wasn't main artery. Now they were yeah. talking about that main artery. They hit a main artery. Couldn't get it cut off, stop and bleed. Yeah, mm. so you know. At the time, you just really thinking, yeah, you go instantly to appreciate the days that you call the good days. And that don't be nothing but just when you're hanging around each other growing up. Right, 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 right. You know. Oh, I don't know where. I can't really remember where I was. But now they said a man had that shot. And it's, on Calvary Street. They told y'all were dead, though, didn't they? No, I don't think they say you were dead. Well, they, they say you were, you know. I don't know. They say you were badly injured, you know. 
Man, I cried and everything, man. I ain't know what the hell to do. You hear me? Live Mario Nigel from, from the, the Crooked, crooked Letter. Ah, nigga, get your weight up, nigga. Don't even try. God first, family second, and my money third. I'm a king, give me streets so fuck what you heard. I got what you want, nigga. That's my word. I'm a winner in this game of life, nigga. And this weather. Hey, wait up, nigga. Uh, uh, you wait up, nigga. 2005 or four, something like that. You know, he was like. I mean, he was straight thugging. I mean, he's just like, <laughs> this guy, he just out just doing whatever, doing his thing, had his long dreads and everything. You know, we were doing our rap thing, whatever. You know, running around with you, man, and all that stuff. But uh, but now, it's like, I mean, it's like, that's my big bro. He always been my big bro, but now mm -hmm. he's just like more knowledgeable. He's mm -hmm. just more wiser, more smarter. He ain't with that street shit no more. You know what I'm saying? He just on some grown man stuff, you know? Of course, you know, we both put the rap thing down, you know, because we just felt like we were just getting older, but now we on the movies. So, you know, I act, you know, he act, you know, I didn't even put him in one of my movies and everything. We never been on another movie together. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, he just on a whole nother level right now. I keep telling him he need to run for Mayor Jackson. <laughs> You know, so if he go on run for me, he damn sure got my support. So, so he's definitely not the West Side Owl that we used to know. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Found out that he got shot with a guy. I think you got shot like, like, two, like on two different times. It man. was two different times, but the first time yeah. was at the store. I was on my way to work. Yeah, they're right. True. They're right. They're right. Where, 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 where you was when I got shot? Hell, I don't know. Did they tell you I had got killed? Yeah. They said I was dead then. Yeah. Yeah. See, a lot yeah. of people, yeah. they yeah. thought that they had said that I was dead, though. Yeah, they said he was dead, and I was like, man, damn, for real, though. But then next thing you know, I see his ass on a damn, uh, was it Facebook? I don't know what it was. It was a documentary. It, I, don't it, see. I don't know. It was some CD cover or something. His I don't know CD cover. His yeah, right. throwing up the west side with the thing <laughs> in the nose. I was like, oh, he all right. You know what I'm saying? And, next thing, really? and next thing you know, shit, he was out. Mm -hmm. uh, Did you feel an impact from the community? You know the following that you guys had already had and things. Yeah, 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 pretty much. What up, you bro? Know, Cause you know, like where we from, you know, they start the rumors and stuff, and you mm -hmm. know they tell me, oh, West Side did, West Side did. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, oh man, we done lost somebody else or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. So right. it pretty much was like, I mean, it was it was heartfelt, you know. We mm -hmm. didn't know like, you know, it was like crazy because I actually died for 21 seconds. I flatlined yeah, yeah, for real yeah. in the yeah. hospital that night. But like I say, and it was so many people there, the hospital was like, why, who is this guy? Because the people, like at different clubs, you know, they told me all this after the fact, was that, man, this nigga West Side got killed, you know what I'm saying? They were sitting on the mic at different clubs, because people stopped leaving the club, trying to go to the That's hospital to see, on, yeah. to see what was going on, people just being nosy and stuff, it was like crazy, man. <laughs> I mean, like, this, I learned about this after the fact, you know? Mm -hmm. But like I said, I mean, that support system was real strong. A lot of people yeah. showed a lot of love. You know, it was a lot of hate too. But, like I say, it's just crazy. This, this is the time we live in. Jackson, Mississippi yeah. ain't nothing to play with. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So, and I came out of the coma like six days later, and the first person I saw was my son, Will, and, and, and uh, uh, my daughter, Bay. And so, you know, behind that, you know, and I started really like, this was tripped out, you know. Uh, basically, they had told me that that night, everybody thought I had died at different clubs, and it was like a whole lot of people from different clubs. And everybody was up there trying to see me, and the people in the hospital wanted to know who was this guy in this club, in this hospital, because this guy had to have, he had to be some kind of, somebody was major because the hospital was like outstanding. They said they had never seen that much traffic before. Like, it was like super, it was like a whole lot of people was there. Mm -hmm. They said it was up in the hundreds. So I don't know, but this is what I was told, you know. So. I had to fight my way back. They told me I would never walk again. Mm, so you went to physical therapy? No, I didn't go to physical therapy. Mm. My brother that's dead, deceased now, mm -hmm. he helped me get back, helped me work my legs. 
I took set. I took the first day. I, I took tried to walk. I took seven steps. And, and not the first day, it was a while, it was like a few weeks after, but I took seven steps. Then I, next day I took like 14, and next day I took 20, 21 before mm -hmm. I knew it, I was outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All these gunshot wounds have led me to have different blood diseases. I have venostasis, mm -hmm. I have high platelets, and that's high risk of heart attacks and stroke. I'm prone to blood clots, so I had to take like three, four different pills at night. And my body never, I never felt like this, you know what I'm saying? I got a lot going on with my blood and my body all because I got hit in the main artery. Mm -hmm. But by the grace of God, if I didn't have God in my life, I don't know where I would be. Mm -hmm. I probably would be dead or in jail. But by the grace of God, God put me through to make me to who I am today. I left here and went to, I went to LA first, went out there and got married and I ended up moving back to Little Rock, Arkansas and bought me a house there because my mom was there and my sister was there. So I bought me a house there and, um, and just had a lot, just had a lot of love there in Little Rock. I started going to the basketball game, coaching basketball, working with the AAU and the city league coach. I went from being one of the Cyrus coaches in the city to the top coach in the city. And pretty much, you know what I'm saying, it was a lot of love shown at Little Rock. I love to go to the games and watch the kids play. A lot of these guys, there's a few guys in the NBA that I watched play in high school in Little Rock. They all love me. Everybody knows who Westside Ad is because I love to be on the sideline acting a fool. I love wearing big old wigs. I love to be just caught up in the moment and have been in the hype with the kids. Mm -hmm. So I moved to Seattle where my son, my other son was, and mm -hmm. I went up there to help him, to teach him how to become a, a, a growing boy and becoming a man. Mm -hmm. But during the process of that, after I was there, mm -hmm. I, I, I got there and I, I ended up going to the oncologists and hematologists. So when I Googled that and found out what it was, that means something dealing with cancer. So I left there, I told, I told my son that I wanted to go back home because I feel like I was, I feel like it might be cancer. I didn't want to know if I had cancer. I didn't mm -hmm. want to know. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to know till I got home, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be back at home in my home state mm -hmm. where I was born and and raised. And so when I got here, they told me it was high playlist. High playlist is that when your playlist count is like extremely high, you're high risk of heart attack, stroke, and it's, it's trying to keep you from getting leukemia. Mm -hmm. So that is the thing that they be watching for within my blood. But like I said, you know, I'm a strong-minded guy, and um, I and I'm a God-fearing man. I love the Lord, mm -hmm. and you know, and like as a youngster, I never did want to go to church. And like as I grew older, mm -hmm. it it really changed me. When I was in Little Rock, I was in the choir. I went to church every Sunday. I never missed Sunday from going to church. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm back here in Jackson. I found a church home. I never missed from going to church. I sang in the choir again. Mm -hmm. I have never gave God much praise as I do now in my whole lifetime as a kid. I go, my mom used to make me go to church, but I never did pay attention. Now that I do go to church, I do pay attention, pay mm -hmm. attention mm -hmm. very well. And uh, I'm very active in my church with whatever needs to be done. If they call me, I'm coming. And I mean, I just, I just love who I am today. I guess it's a growing process of doing it shift change you know it's a growing process mm -hmm. of being grown up into manhood mm -hmm. my name is Drew man aka kenneth howard jr Today Westside out doing his thing with the with, with the company on the internet, which you know he great at day, really great at everything he do. And then you know he in church, you know he gonna he gonna stay in church, you know with the choir singing, you know he gonna preach, you know try to try to make sure the youth, you know do whatever he can, you know he gonna be on every scene he can he can be on, you know what I'm saying. 
when you first met Al, what was your first perception of him? I really thought he was annoying. I really, I met him after he uh, was shot. He was in the hospital yeah. for a uh, long time. Uh, very attack. annoying. He what? was very annoying. But, you know, then I got to know him. We started riding motorcycles together. I mean, he was an okay guy. You just have to get to know who he is to appreciate yeah. who he is. Most, most definitely. trying to stop all this violence and this stupid stuff that's going on around here. You grown up need to start going, looking up under your kids, checking their book bag, going up under their uh, bed, their pillow, all that. These are the things that too much. And you know what? Let me tell you something. I am a big, a victim of violence right here in West Jackson. 2005, I was shot up here at the store corner town. I was shot a lot of times. I died that night for 21 seconds by the grace of God. I'm still here today to deliver these messages to you. You understand what I'm saying? Without God, I wouldn't have none. I've been out there on the drugs, killing the drugs, doing that for that. You feel what I'm saying? I'm talking to you. I want you to look at me while I'm saying that. So you know why I want you to look at me? Because something just told me to say something to you. Don't be no fool running around here with little father there and letting them trick you. And when you dead and gone, they're going to wear your shirt for one week. You understand? When they get to wear your shirt, they're going to move all the stuff that's going to get done. Now, when you're ready to go to the jail, huh? you go to jail and they didn't get caught. Let me tell you something. How many times do you think they're going to write you? How many times do you think they're going to write you? They ain't going to write you damn time, man. I'm just telling you the real. Now, I ain't got nothing to do with what nobody do. That's their business. But I'm going to say this right here. They can say Jackson Bad, you can run the Byron, you can run the Madison, you can run the Rank and Counter, all this place. I'm going to stay right here where I eat, sleep, and breathe Jackson, Mississippi. And I'm going to make a difference here. Without y'all, I can't make a difference. Now, when you see me again, let me know. If you got some of your man you want to say, if somebody bothers you, let me know. I'm going to talk to the right people to make sure they're out of your life. That they won't be bothering you no more. So you won't have to do nothing stupid. I take a chance on getting killed, I'm going out there killing somebody. You understand what I'm saying, big man? I'm talking about for real. And let me tell you something. Y'all cool. I'm sitting here looking at how y'all feel. Y'all mumbling about y'all that did. And I ain't trying to put you on spot. Hold the reason for I ain't trying to put you on spot or nothing. But look at the night told you what. Man, when I was coming up, I ain't had no rocks on my feet. I was buddy. I was real life buddy. By the grace of God, they told me that I was going to make it past 25 years old. I done been shot on four different cases right here in West Jackson because I was out of place doing something I didn't have no business doing. You're looking at a real legend, man. I turned 50 years old, September 10th. You know what I'm saying? They told me I'm going to live, man. 25 lifespan on you guys. Ain't no fun of 21. You hear me? They don't expect you to make it past 21. Get what they say when you walk back. He ain't going to mount it, man. He's going to end up dead. You can prove them wrong. Stop going over to the schoolhouse, coming back home, telling your mama, talking about the teacher, bothering you. Don't you know they're struggling, trying to take care of their household? When you go in that classroom and you ain't doing what you're supposed to do, see, that's the problem. That's what I was, a problem child. Get what the lady, the teacher told me. She said, you can laugh if you want to. When that boat pick up everybody else, you're going to be standing on the bay and you're going to wonder why the boat going on and I'm still standing here. You know why? Because I failed. You don't have to fail. Stop going over to that school, doing stupid stuff, talking back to them teachers. Cause that ain't what your mama didn't send you there for. Now if your mama sending you there to go over there and keep up your job and going over there with bull crap, it's a crime. What's wrong? What's wrong? And another thing, y'all kids What's over there in the schoolhouse bullying each other, they got a place for bullying now. Don't you know you can get charges filed for you at nine years old, man? As a bully, you laughing, I'm dead serious now. You can get charges filed against you and your folks can be arrested, your mama can be arrested, your daddy can be arrested, and guess what? Who gonna be at home to take care of you? You gotta figure it out. It took a lot for me to come up on this stage, and I don't mind talking and saying whatever I want to say, because I'm gonna speak my mind when it comes to these citizens of Jackson. You understand? Now, if these folks clear me and give me a clean slate on these records, War 5 right here, War 5, the whole way Jackson community, you better believe I'm gonna be sitting on the city council without y'all support. I won't be sitting there. But I'm guess what? I'm letting you know today. I'm gonna run for city council, not the mayor. I'm gonna make sure that Lord Five stop all this bull crap. These people run around here buying all these properties up when they should be putting it together trying to get some of these people some help that want some help. But you gotta also want somebody to help you. 